This scope is what happens when you have a bunch of very talented engineers get into a room together, but unfortunately, none of the people in the room have ever gone to the shooting range. How to folks, you're watching Deuce, and this is the Arius 1 to 6 power tactical scope. I've had it for several months, and it has lived on several different rifle platforms that I own. Most recently, last week, you saw it being utilized on my 350 Legend AR-15 platform, and it did a wonderful job. This scope ticks a lot of boxes for what people look for in a tactical scope. But are they the right boxes that should be checked? Well, let's talk about that. Like all of my reviews, I'm going to go over the good and bad of this scope. I do not believe there's such thing as a perfect product, and this is no different. So let's go over the good first. This thing feels like and acts like it is built like a tank, or if you're in the south, a brick shit house. This thing feels so substantial and it's heavy too. So I'll put the weight right here. I've not actually weighed it myself. I believe I could take this off the rifle, use it as a hammer to hammer nails at the shooting range to hang the targets, and then it would not lose accuracy. Now, I don't recommend that, nor do I suggest doing that. But if there's any scope that could do that, I feel this might be it. This is a one to six power by 24 tactical scope in a price range where you're normally finding these scopes at the one to four power range. And this actually has a one power scope setting. Now, many of the one to four or one to six power scopes have the, it, the nomenclature says one power, but in actuality, it's like 1.25 power or 1.1 power or even 1.5 power scope as their lowest setting, which isn't really that usable as a red dot. And of course, this being illuminated, you can use this as a red dot style scope at the one power setting. And if you take off the scope caps here, you'll see that this is a very clear scope, very, very clear optically. Now it's a one power to six power scope, so there's not a lot of there's not a lot of glass there to really get in your way like there would be in a three to nine power scope or a four to 16 power scope. But this is very clear. I would put this on the same range as Vortex Optics as far as clarity of glass goes. Included in the box is a flash kill which screws right on and is literally made for the scope, which is pretty cool. Now, do you need a flash kill? Probably not because it was originally designed to keep the reflection from the sun from giving away your position to a enemy sniper. Well, the vast majority of us are not gonna to have to worry about an enemy sniper. But luckily the flash kills have a secondary purpose and that is to reduce glare. If you're shooting not straight into the sun, but a little bit off center toward the sun, then sometimes these scopes will have a lot of glare coming off the front lens there. And a flash kill can almost eliminate that. Now you won't completely eliminate it, but it will do a really good job. It will be basically like a sunshade, but much smaller footprint. I mean, a sunshade will have this big, huge tube coming out of the front. While shooting this scope, I found it very easy to dial in, and I really had no problem in getting it centered up for any kind of platform I put it on. I found the illuminated reticle very easy to use. I really liked how it's set up with the, uh, the UI on this is very helpful. And the fact that it has an offsetting in between every illumination level. So there's six and then off, and then five and then off, and then four and then off. So you don't have to cycle through all five, six, seven, whatever brightness settings to get it to turn off. The turret covers look very cool as you can see right there and they come right off. The adjustment, the turret adjustments are kind of mushy, but they work and they're pretty much standard quarter MOA per click. The clicks are not very audible. You can feel them. Yeah, you can barely hear them at all, but you can feel the clicks. I prefer to be able to hear them as well because sometimes you're shooting with gloves on and the turrets are a little bit stiff, so you might not be able to use gloves that often. Also, it is a first focal plane scope, which basically means as you increase magnification, the reticle also grows in size. So then the measurements on the reticle are always consistent and accurate. Also, the lens covers are even well designed. You take the big one off, you take the small one off, they stack. So you put them together like that and they store on the battery compartment like so. Now that's ingenious. I forgot to mention, this is a 30 millimeter scope. So it does have the extra wide adjustment for windage and elevation and just extra light transmission in general for the 30 millimeter tube. And now unfortunately we have to get to the bad stuff. Okay, number one is that the scope does come with 
a box full of goodies here. There we go. They offer these scope rings and some more generic looking scope rings that are cheaper to make and sell. Those style scope rings have no business on a tactical scope that really is meant for an AR-15. Now, if you're gonna put this on a, on a Ruger 1022, then yeah, these scope rings will be fine. But on an AR-15, you need the cantilever scope to get that scope way out over the, uh, over the receiver. When I first tried this out on my AR-15, I did not have, or I did not have, I could not find my cantilever 30 millimeter scope mount. So I was using these scope rings right here and they worked fine, but they weren't perfect. You need a cantilever scope mount for this. The magnification adjustment ring is very, very stiff. It is very stiff. It's loosened up a little bit over the last couple of months, but it is nowhere near smooth or fast to adjust. Now what this scope needs is a cattail for the magnification adjustment. And I reached out to Arius about that to see if they offered one or had one for sale. They do not. So I fashioned one out of zip ties here, but if you wanted to go out of your way, you could manufacture one to fit into that little mount and it would probably work pretty well. And lastly, the big issue I have with this scope, it's got the wrong reticle in it. This is a one to six power scope. It is not a high power, long range scope. This is a short range scope. This is gonna be living between the 10 yard line and the 100 yard line for distance for the most part. There'll be some times when you try to reach out and touch somebody or target, hopefully, way, way off in the distance, but that's gonna be a hope and a prayer for the most part. Six power scope, you're looking at a three gun event, which is gonna be under 100 yards. You really need to match the reticle style with the magnification and general purpose of the scope because you're never gonna utilize the bottom of that reticle. And when you have that reticle illuminated, then it pretty much paints your entire picture in red and it kind of becomes distracting when you're trying to focus on your subject matter downrange. Some of you, including the Arius company, are probably asking right now, well, Deuce, what would you do about that? What changes would you make? Well, let me tell you. The first change I would make and the least important would be to offer a version of this scope with a cantilever mount on it for era 15 usage. You could call it the tactical version or whatnot, charge an extra 10, 15 bucks for it, but you do really need a cantilever mount for Era 15s, which this scope is really meant for. Change number two, try to figure out how to lighten up that magnification ring to where you can make adjustments really quick on the fly or put a great big cattail on there. If it was a folding cattail, that would be great, but you wanna be able to swing this thing from one power to six power very quickly. And the third change, and by far the most important, get rid of that reticle. <laughs> get rid of the reticle and replace it with a non-illuminated, very thin crosshair, like what you find in a loophole, and put in the center of that crosshair an illuminated either delta or a, a U-shape like a, um, a horseshoe, either a horseshoe or a diamond or just a circle and that part is illuminated and still make it the first focal plane so it still grows and shrinks with the magnification choice but that will make this scope almost perfect. This scope is what happens when you have a bunch of very talented engineers get into a room together and they go through and check out the boxes of what makes a great rifle scope but unfortunately none of the people in the room have ever gone to the shooting range. If you wanna pick up one of these scopes, I will try to find a link. I'm assuming they're still available. If I can find a link, I'll put it down in the comment section below the video and you can take a look at them. Remember, I have no affiliation with this company nor with this scope and I'd get no compensation from the sales. I just thought it was a cool looking scope and I wanted to try it out. If you like this video, go ahead and hit me a like and go subscribe for a lot more is on the way. If you have any comments, questions, or a show ideas, leave that in the comment box below the video. And as always, you guys have a great day. See ya.